Hello, my dear brothers and sisters. Warm welcome to one and all of you. Excuse me. I greet you in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As always, it gives me a great pleasure that we are united in this under this one name, and that's the name of Jesus. And I keep telling you this: we are very much gifted that we are having this kind of facility that. you know we can research from the word of god we can talk from the word of god and yeah we can do anything that is needed and uh, no one can question us at this point of time because we are living in the democratic world and as long as we have this luxury of democracy please make the fullest usage of uh, you know what we are being we are being offered all right so once again a warm welcome and uh, thank you for um staying connected on this sessions and and i hope you benefit from all of these sessions a lot so we are dealing with this important subject we are in lesson number 39 and uh, again i keep repeating this lesson number 39 is just to remind these kind of sessions are overwhelming and this is not going to end any soon why because what we are learning is not just a series right it's not just a series where we are banking on the quantitative numbers and stuff like that no we are definitely not working for anything quantitatively but we are bunch of people who are very focused on qualitative output or qualitative things as as outcome right i hope I hope you're all with me why these kind of teachings are important especially this teaching is important it is all about your life on earth and life after death on earth <laughs> confused we are talking about the first life on earth and we are going to talk about the second life in heaven in paradise in eternity yes and that's why this specific session is very very important why because we are connecting both the dots we are connecting physical anatomy with that of the spiritual anatomy physical anatomy comprises of body and mind body means every single organ every single cell every single or um, nerve every single blood vessels your heart your liver uh, the what is it digestive organs and excretory organs and every single thing that you uh, consolidate that constitutes to something called as physical anatomy and spiritual anatomy technically speaking it is spirit and soul however we are including the physical anatomy the body and mind as part of spiritual anatomy because we explained this multiple times that the body and mind are exposed to the world but however they are not intellectual enough they are not capable enough to judge to justify and to be decisive they consult the spirit and the spirit consults the holy spirit versus evil spirit that's the choice that the spirit makes that's why you need to be grounded and rooted and i will tell you 99% of the people they make wrong choices unknowingly unwillingly or most likely it is unknowingly i didn't understand i didn't realize that it was a trap i didn't realize it was the evil spirit who was behind all of these i didn't realize it was the work of the demonic forces beloved this is exactly what you're going to listen or hear from the father almighty in the day of judgment and he's going to ask you one important question how you allowed yourself um in self deception while my son had been sent blood had been shed salvation had been pronounced redemption happens deliverance happens you're freed you're not any more bonded uh, you're bonded slave or you are enslaved to certain things you had been given all the freedom and that's called as the good news in the gospel right and how is that you allowed yourself you wicked servant god will call you as a wicked as a wicked servant or in other words you devil get lost from my sight or get away from my presence why what makes god to call you using such words god who is so loving so compassionate yeah but he makes a statement like this you wicked servant get away from my sight why because of your negligence of your reluctance your sluggishness yes your ignorance 
your busyness. Yeah, many people are so busy, very busy, brother. Let me see if I can come and attend. You don't even see, you don't attend. For whose sake you are attending? For your own benefit. You are not doing a favor to anyone, not even to God. I keep telling you this. I keep telling this to you, right? People think they go to church because they are so merciful towards God. <laughs> not the other way around. God merciful towards them. No, they are merciful towards God. They think that way. Attending the service in the church and calling out the name of Jesus, they are actually favoring God. No. You're favoring yourself. It's your benefit. You want to learn, you learn. You don't want to learn, go to hell. That's exactly what Revelation 22, 11 says. Those who are filthy, let them be more filthy. And you put everything possible. Those who are blindfold, let them, let them be blindfold. Those who are living in deception, let them live in deception. Those who are um, living in negligence, reluctance, let them live in negligence, reluctance. Go to hell, all you people who are least bothered about the doctrines that have been taught in the Bible and it cost so many people they shed their blood all the puzzles have been killed brutally Peter crucified upside down James was beheaded Paul was beheaded and you know the history right all of them Thomas was murdered with a weapon I mean he was stabbed in his stomach yes and likewise only John was spared because he had to write the book of Revelation and Jesus said that it's my choice and therefore, he had a natural death. It caused so many people so much of sacrifice to the extent of shedding their blood for the gospel. And you treating this gospel so cheaply, so lightly, then you deserve <laughs> going to hell. This is exactly not what I'm saying. This is exactly what you will hear from the Father. And this is your chance. This is your chance. And I've been to a few countries, I told you, right? And... I mean, due to my work, not for ministry. And whenever I try, all the time they will be very, you know, friendly and all that will gel and partying together. Not alcoholic partying. I refrain from such parties. But then, moment I cross the circles or cross their path, calling out God, Jesus, do you go to church? And all oh, their face changes, their attitude changes. Why? Because they think I'm touching their free will. Many, many people, especially Christians, they feel when we emphasize some of the doctrines, when we teach some of the laws and commandments and ask them not to lead their lives this way and they need to go change their lifestyle, habitual practices, thought process and introspections and all that, they think we are touching their free will. Now is exactly where you are bound, binding me. You are enslaving me. And who taught this? New doctrine which is not in the Bible. This is exactly called as living your life in self-deception. But you call yourself as Christian. And when we talk like this, oh, no, I don't want to call myself as Christian. If this is what your Christianity is teaching, oh, forget it. If this is what your Bible is asking me to live a life, forget it. Forget it. Go to hell. That's exactly what God says. <laughs> and you will not have time to repent. You will not have the second chance to fix. And that's why this session is important. This series is important. Why? Because you can fix things here on earth through your physical anatomy, through your spiritual anatomy. And therefore, your soul rejoices in joy. Right? Your soul rejoices filled in joy. And because he knows for sure that he is going to make his way to paradise. You get that assurance. You get that blessed assurance about which we spoke from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, the first half. All right. Warm welcome again to this series. And we are talking from the book of um, 2 Corinthians. Yeah, 2 Corinthians. And we are discussing about uh, various concept, concepts. But then here we are stuck with one concept and I'm not able to move. Uh, forward it's not a deliberate attempt don't get me wrong but it is something that i felt we all have to learn we all have to understand the basics and if we don't understand the basics then what happens is you think you understand the basics and move towards the advanced uh, concepts but then 
you realize after some time that you are neither in basics nor in advanced that's the state of many christians these days yeah they are like half cooked vegetables and some of them are pastors too some of them are teachers bible teachers too so what happens beloved this is what exactly the devil needs why because he could always keep you in this kind of blindfold state in this kind of confused state in this kind of misconception and take you away from god he doesn't have to make any effort because you're already away from god because you made the wrong choice you joined the hands with the wrong person but the right person according to the powers of according to the you know powers of darkness is according to the demonic forces they're very glad that you joined your hands with them <laughs> this is exactly what they want yes you're all very silent if you're silent you're thinking or oh, there is other meaning for silence to your in deep sleep so you check out which which one which which category you fall all right so i hope you have already turned your bibles to second corinthians chapter 5 where we had been discussing about this reconciliation topic and reconciliation the first session that is lesson 37 something like that i just check it out we spoke about the couple the marriage relationship and how they build their rap on trust the same concept we applied it to the marriage between the spirit and the holy spirit and we described and we took you through few illustrations practically theoretically and spiritually and likewise we also spoke a lot about the repentance versus regret right um confessions um evolving due to regret is much different from the confessions followed by repentance why because repentance is firm decisive affirmative that it will make a choice saying no to the sin saying no to the past and marching ahead uh towards a futuristic perspective being renounced and renewed in that new life gospel and um and being cleansed by the blood of Jesus and being pronounced as righteous and then making the decision that never ever would i go back to such a place yes so that's the beauty of this new gospel that's the beauty of this good news that we get from the gospel yes in the name of Jesus so on the same lines we would be continuing to meditate uh, i have not got an opportunity to get inside the second uh, corinthian chapter 5 verses uh, what 12 to 21 is our meditation verse i i i couldn't just get inside because um i want to be sure that we are we are very clear on the reconciliation uh, as a topic yeah by 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 theology or by philosophy or by doctrine or by um yeah spiritual uh, illustration whatever you call it as we got to be very clear and i firmly believe that we are clear now therefore time to get into the original bible study that is verse 12 second corinthians 5:12 we're talking about the perspectives of what is reconciliation to god be reconciled to god is the commandment that paul gives yes it's you can call it as commandment you can call it as instruction and that's what we had been discussing in the last two classes how important it is to reconcile and what could help us reconcile what could possibly get us there many people think it all happens uh, spontaneously no it doesn't happen dramatically no absolutely it it doesn't happen on its own you you got to put in that efforts you got to agree to yourself and then with god and for that there is a process between agreeing to yourself and you talking to god revealing on what you desired there is something in between this and that yeah and we connected those dots in the previous sessions and i definitely don't have time to rewind the tape you have to please go through last two sessions before you start listening to this one i'm reading from the from the bible kjv version for we do not commend ourselves again to you hmm? but give you opportunity to glory 
on our behalf that you may have something to answer those who glory in appearance and not in heart very very simple message it may look very complicated see paul's letters are a little complicated because he has too much of knowledge <laughs> yeah beloved servant of god too much of knowledge there isn't anybody greater than him seriously i'm telling you this next to jesus it's paul so much of effort he had put in hard work and he had the guts to even start from zero the moment you went through the, he went through that that uh, blind in, incident where he was uh, blind was what is it sitting blind for 3 days and 3 nights and after that he decides i'll start from scratch do you have the guts you can call him as a crazy person insane or mad guy whatever you call him as people called him blabberer also right and today centuries later they called him saint therefore i am not worried about people calling me with whatever names that's why paul is my classic example that's exactly the reason why i am least bothered and who was a classic example to paul jesus jesus said you call me demon fine <laughs> no problem but still listen to the truth what i am talking <laughs> that's the attitude of jesus you call me you insult me you throw stones at me no problem but then you listen to me you pay attention and then then throw stones therefore what he is trying to say here is though that you may have something to answer those who glory in appearance and not in heart he is talking about the externals people who glory in their outward appearance have you have you have you noticed people saying ha always i am in prayer brother what are you praying about bless my daughter bless my daughter in law bless my son bless my son in law bless my uh, wa- it will be all about i myself and me and that's why they are busy in prayer always busy in prayer one side i appreciate that they have a praying attitude which is good maybe that's the reason their family is prosperous materialistic but not prosperous spiritually why because you are not praying about their mindset renewal of mind and lowliness in their mind spirit of humility should linger should cling and you're not praying about the transformation of spirit there is no spiritual deeds in your prayer you have a big shopping list oh god get a good job for my son oh god heal my sickness oh god heal my daughter and oh god take care of my wife and traffic is overwhelming therefore please help us in accidents which is nice which is good important prayer but you know what that only constitutes to 10% of what you actually call it as prayer why because this prayer is all about the physical anatomy almost almost physical anatomy that is i wouldn't say physical anatomy this is much to do with this present life on earth whereas the remaining 90% of your prayer is still missing it's void what is that that's the prayer towards your life after death that is on your second about your second life in eternity yes and that includes you being transformed in your spirit your own renewal of mindset and you being anointed in the fruits of the spirit or you being blessed in the fruits of the spirit and you get that anointing of the holy spirit and receive the gifts including the tongues talking in mystery to god and praying for the world and praying for the world's deliverance and praying for the people praying for the mankind praying for the heathens yes and also acquiring that supernatural powers to free the people from the demonic forces and redeeming them from the clutches of the devil yes and then you talking and imagining visualizing on things that are above that is your life after death where would you go how would the white throne judgment look like how confident you are that you will come out clean and green you understand 90% is all about these kind of things and how are you going to serve this mankind what do you want to do with your money spend all it for yourself on your cars bikes and houses and the dresses and clothes and uh, you know we give, give give it to your i you know i'm i'm giving lot of money you are giving lot of money to whom to your own daughter daughter in law father father in law and son and son in law and mother your own family that is not giving giving happens i mean the 
sacrifices comes into picture when you give to someone else whom you do not know and that too you must be ensured that they cannot repay you back that's actually called as giving offering you know that and such people are called as cheerful givers not the one who gives that offering on a sunday morning to their church and get some attention from the pastor some people give a lot of money why because they could get attention and some people you know shamefully they display the top offerers this is the kind of christendom we are living in but then it's okay let's come back to the original point what is it? why what am i what am i describing here i'm talking about the people who glory in appearance who glory outwardly who glory on the worldly deeds who take a lot of pleasure and joy when they get something materialistic promotions offered in this in your company and new car and new house and new wife and new wife means first first wife only and only wife i'm talking about your marriage and one marriage yeah yeah newborn baby which is nice i'm not saying it's wrong but they constitute only to or they consolidate only to 10 percentage yes you don't agree huh? then if you don't agree you explain colossians 3 2 and we have explained colossians 3 2 right set your mind on the things that are above above and not the things on the earth of the earth and romans 12 1 uh, and 2 do not be conformed to this world if you don't agree with this doctrine of yeah um, glory in out in appearance then you go back and check on these two verses and be convinced yourself on what you are believing maybe perhaps you believe in only outward appearance please live that way and you know what is the destiny we already told you by saying that are we telling you that we should shouldn't glory in your appearance you shouldn't glory you shouldn't have a good house i always told you i am not that crazy preacher or a teacher who believes in ah uh, what is that spiritual uh, so materialistic poverty and spiritual prosperity how is that came out very well no materialistic poverty you should have only one old bicycle and uh, uh two slippers and one one cloth to wear and one cloth to wash so you can't just roam around naked no oh, they are so humble it seems yeah spiritually they are prosperous oh they are filled in tongues and they are miracle workers and demons will tremble and um they are very great preachers and teachers and all that that is your doctrine that is not the doctrine of the bible doctrine of the bible says be prosperous in everything that you do you will receive abundance in every good work you do that will be all sufficiency in all things you lack for nothing bible says jesus says hey i send you two by two and i didn't ask you to carry money bags or food or anything did you lack anything when peter asked we 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 gave up everything and we came after you what do we get you will not lack anything and then he says you know did you guys lack anything they said no father similarly the father will take care of you and matthew 6 he says do not worry about tomorrow for god who even takes care of the birds of the air you think he is going to forget you absolutely no you are created in the image of god that means what how do you believe if this is true matthew 6 is true then how do you believe that materialistic poverty and spiritual prosperity you will be prosperous materialistic you will be prosperous spiritually you will have good money as bank balance and you why you have good money in your as bank balance because you could give more to the poor downtrodden needy orphans and you could serve the mankind people not be able to clear the hospital bills during this pandemic situation you will be releasing that money you understand very sad situation people don't get their body i mean their near and dear ones have been admitted due to covid and they are dead they are not releasing the bodies if you don't clear the bills you cannot go and argue yeah my person is dead it's like operation success and patient dead therefore i am not paying my hospital bills no hospital will release the body you have to still pay up the bills yes for which you need money and you cannot say oh i don't believe in materialistic prosperity i am a man who believes in this doctrine of materialistic poverty and whatever you will you will go through such a you will become the social stigma you will become such a shame in everybody's eyes that you are not even able to redeem your father's your own father's body or your mother's body or your relative's body 
and you're not able to give them even a decent burial and what kind of doctrine is this that can't even abide by the basics of what is expected of your humanity you're not even a human being then let's talk about your discipleship in christ and all that nonsense this is how world will look at you i'm talking about both the aspects right i'm talking on both the aspect aspects glory in appearance that is like taking pride taking boast in what the lord had done to you in this materialistic deeds therefore it is quite visible in the eyes of men and god that you have a wonderful home you have a good property you have a good car you have a good job you have a good balance you have a bank balance and you have good dresses to wear and you live that life in majest you, you you live a, you live a majestic life nothing wrong that's exactly gospel is talking about yeah that's what jesus said when the bridegroom bridegroom is around no one will have to fast but when the bridegroom is taken yeah the 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 brides will fast what does it mean you will be still prosperous and have the feeling that jesus is with you and you will be happy and joyful and eating and uh, you know all three meals but when you are overwhelmed in sorrow when the holy spirit tells you look at the condition of the world go fast and pray for three days and three nights you will sacrifice your food yes and that's called a spiritual prosperity if you are spiritually rich you will not only pay attention to the materialistic needs or materialistic deeds but you will be focused on the spiritual deeds too and that's exactly what happened these apostles who are even fighting when jesus announced about his crucifixion in the book of um, luke and actually i started to weep very much i saw their attitude and i was wondering father how is it you make your choice to choose people like us yeah and uh, yeah b- book of uh, luke um i'm sorry i i missed that verse uh, but we all remember right there jesus is is predicting again about um, his, his crucifixion and uh, these two guys um, what is it where who's that uh, james john and peter yeah jesus transfigured on the mount and yeah i got it um, luke chapter 9 jesus again predicts his death and they were all amazed the majesty of god and everyone marveled and all that uh, i will read luke 9 5 but 40 44 let these words sink down uh, in your in your into your ears for the son of man is about to be delivered into the hands of men but they did not understand as it was hidden from them they did not perceive it and they were afraid and asked him about but they understood that jesus was going to be gone very soon that much they understood they didn't understand the divinity in the crucifixion crucifixion and then crucifixion and then resurrection and as the world people who take that glory in outward appearance uh, yes outward appearance mean, means what getting that prominent position getting that you know seat at the higher place or in the front row hmm? you want to be called with a reverend and doctor and doctor of doctors and all that right they were fighting for that position verse 46 then a dispute you know what is dispute they were literally pushing at each other and f- fighting an extremity of quarrel is called as disputing they didn't shed blood or they didn't stone each other but then dispute is as good as like sharp argument paul had a dispute with uh, um, barnabas and bible calls it as sharp argument Ar- argument turned sharply and they realized they are almost getting into dispute and both were true men of god very good brothers in christ before it could get actual or get transformed to actual dispute paul and barnabas say hey we will not fight okay you take mark i will take timothy with me and paul departed and barnabas also went the other way and paul realized his mistake barnabas was right because paul was very impatient and he was judgmental too and he appreciates mark for his ministry and mark started doing well after he joined hands with barnabas because why i found that there is a problem with paul's leadership even paul was learning on the leadership 
I don't think he was patient enough to coach him and mentor him. Yes, Paul was also glowing in outward appearance because outwardly this guy is bad, but for us, he saw something inside of Mark. And he started to work um, with Mark because he saw something inside of him. Okay, so here a dispute happens among them then as of which them which of them would be greatest can you believe this jesus talking about his death brutally is going to be crucified and tortured by men and and he's going to be resurrected and all that immediately these guys are fighting who's going to fill that place that was the mentality why that mentality came because they have not yet received the holy spirit they have not yet understood the doctrines they're mere fishermen most of them were into fishing business and and at least half of them are illiterates. They don't even know what gospel is all about. They have no learning of uh, what is saying. Um, they have no literacy as far as the scriptural uh, knowledge is concerned. Therefore, I'm not surprised that this is this was their behavior, and they were the people naturally to be focusing on the outward appearance. Yeah, and what gives them joy and happiness? The outward glory, right? Outward glory means yeah, when, they, when they get promotions, when they get uh, hikes and when they get new cars and everything materialistic, everything to do with the world, everything, everything involved in, the, um, uh, you know, to be involved with the, wor in the, in the worldly deeds. Uh, therefore, who are you, brother? You're a worldly person. And Bible calls the worldly person as a wicked person because he has joined hands with a wicked demon. Because the ruler of the earth is devil. And what good can you expect from this earth when you have joined hands with the devil and the demonic forces? And that's why Paul gives here that you will have an glory on our behalf that you may have something to answer. You may not have everything to answer. That means what? At least be half-cooked vegetables. That's what he's begging. <laughs> At least... Get to know Bible partially. Know the basics of the Bible, man. You don't even have to go to the advanced topics and go through experiences like what I had gone through, visiting paradise, and I have gone and said hello to Moses. All the people were living there, right? I'm sure he would have met every one of them. Would you think Paul would have lost that opportunity? God would have opened the door. This is my imagination. And said that, Paul, you have six hours from now, or maybe 24 hours from now. Go for a ride. Yeah, I've arranged a vehicle and he's your ambassador. Who? Abraham. <laughs> Abraham is a, uh, Abraham, uh, is, is a father, right? Father of Israel. And, and he will take you and you will go through an introductory session. You know what Paul would have said? Father, you have given me 24 hours. You keep your Abraham with you. Let me be myself. Because why? This guy is independent fellow. And you think he would have changed any different after he had reached... <laughs> <laughs> heavens actually no you keep your abraham this is all my imagination now don't look at abraham as a person oh he doesn't know anything or what he's lesser than paul huh? nothing like that but paul is a very independent person he likes to explore he's very dynamic and he enjoys doing that even i learned it from paul i enjoy doing that i am not copy pasting this message from anyone's message and most of the time i speak without notes trust me why because I'm grounded and rooted in the word. And I boast in my Lord for coaching me, teaching me, mentoring me, helping me, guiding me. Yeah, directing me. And it took me 20 plus, 25 plus years. It didn't happen in one overnight. No, 25 plus years reading Bible. And I didn't go to Bible college. I didn't join hands with any theology and I didn't go and meet anyone. Why? Because Holy Spirit is my teacher. Holy Spirit is my preacher. Holy Spirit is my theology uh, teacher and Holy Spirit is my Bible tutor. I don't need anyone greater than him. And I tell you, I keep telling you, I welcome you to test my spirit. Please listen to some of the messages in our channel and you will know what kind of spirit we possess. And some of the people even asked, have you, had you, had you gone through any training or something? No, yeah, yeah, I gone through training, but training within the four walls. And oh, four walls, somebody came to your house and they taught you? Yes, yes, somebody came. And what was, who, who was it? Can you please introduce that person? Hey, you also know that person, man. And that person is actually living in your house and in, in, in my house too. And you know what is that house I'm calling about? Your body is the temple of God. And that is his house. I'm talking about Holy Spirit. Go to your home and 
shut up, shut your doors and talk to him and the lord who hears from the secret place will reward you publicly matthew 6 verses 5 and 6 my favorite verse and that's the only method to pray i am a great believer in fellowship and fasting prayers and and i love it and it's nice but again that contributes maybe 5 to 10% of my spiritual growth not more than that remaining 90% comes um only through your relationship that you establish the connectivity that you establish with your holy spirit and that's where we are discussing here about this four nomenclatures especially the role of the spirit here given to you yes and that for your body and mind they fall in place and they know how to fight against the wiles of the devil using the spirit sword of the spirit and the helmet of salvation and the belt of the truth and what not six weapons are given in ephesians 6 therefore you will have something see i have so many things now how do you think I, and it's not something that i'm preaching for tens and hundreds of sessions right i have many things and i keep telling you one life is not enough to preach this gospel there is so much to teach and preach there is so much to meditate there is so much to uh, introspect there is so much to analyze bible is heavy lifting i do not know how people take it so lightly and they carry that mini bible in their hand or e bible where is the bible it's here brother they will show the phone e bible mm. e bible half the translation is controlled by devil do you know that you will find a different meaning there just try reading between the original king james version or nivs and all that versus that e bible it's completely twisted new meanings are introduced and you are carrying that mini bible pocket bible huh you don't have in have time to carry that bible and you don't have time for anything else and even in the service half the time you are sleeping or looking at that girl and this guy and that uncle and you are saying hello to this auntie or virtual fly kiss yeah in the air they will kiss each other and let's meet after the meeting ah huh? and after the meeting together they will spend canteen time in canteen having lunch which is triple the time than they spending time in the actual fellowship in the church service i mean to say what kind of christians you are shame on you heaven doesn't welcome you no the hell will roll down that red carpet to you you are welcome there or you belong there beloved who are you you are the one who glory in that outward appearance you are the one who glory outwardly you are the one who will put that humble face and holy face and all that and white and white cloth and whatever dresses you i'm not against white and white clothing it's good i love it too okay but if you wear that white and white clothing clothing living life in darkness and your heart is tan and all that and evil spirit is governing you then shame on you are you that person who takes that credit of this outward glory outwardly yes and at that sunday morning you will ensure that the whole street is watching you yes they will watch you and they will mark you look at this fellow shameless fellow after he returns back from church you see what he does this is exactly what they will be talking about you you think you are going to be that holy brother and sister and all that no they know very well and god will start the judgment from your own family from from your own neighborhood yes he will he will he will counsel uh, sorry now here uh, what is that he will hear all of these guys confessing about you testifying about you and only then god will consult his son and the angel there is another angel who is recording and all that that's my imagination no angel is needed because why the soul himself is the testimony right everything is recorded in the soul yes and the soul is facing him and the soul has no part or no part to play i'm telling you no role to play there he will be watching and listening silently you know you this is your chance to talk to react to fix things and all that therefore don't waste time in quarrel disputes arguments uh contradictions and fightings bloodshed and murder and all that don't waste time you won't get an opportunity to fix all of these errors here on earth is your chance first chance second chance millionth chance god is patient bound to mercy slow to anger bound to compassion everlasting mercy psalm 145 8 and 9 psalm 107 11 psalm 103 11 sorry psalm 147 11 not 107 11 okay you talk about god's attitude yeah these are the references kind heart and you need not be afraid you need not be uh, filled in terror do not worry these cannot harm you i 54 11 says that 
<sighs> are you all with me don't take any glory i mean to say again that's why i'm making it very clear live a majestic life please have the best of your home clothing air conditioning room or cars or job and earn well give well bless others so that you have something to answer those who glory in appearance and not in heart we covered both actually what do you mean by not in heart anything that you have done outwardly that simply means you have not gone by what your spirit says you have gone by what your body and mind that says in that in other way you have not i mean i'm talking to the spirit now spirit that not gone by what your holy spirit says but you have gone by what your evil spirit says because you have lived your life in surrenderance allowing your body mind and uh, spirit to be controlled and ruled and governed by the evil spirit and you have not understood you are living your life in deception why because no many people taught you but you would not hear you are busy in looking at yourself uh, nowadays you know what those days ladies used to carry that small hand mirror and all that right nowadays men also carry a hand mirror and you know what is the name of that mirror mobile selfie they switch on the camera and the guy is looking at the camera and adjusting his hair style adjusting his face and the ladies especially you know right definitely like uh, that eyelash cream and uh, whatever lipstick and etc etc they are busy doing this outward appearance glowing in your outward appearance and a poor pastor i'm talking about good pastors standing there and watching all this nonsense that's why most of the good pastors know they look at camera and they talk they don't look at the crowd <laughs> because most of the sessions are recorded these days right they go online and all that so they look at the camera and they talk which is better brother you safeguard your uh, spiritual deeds right you end up looking this brother and that sister then you are going to be pulled in that direction too you are distracted at least in the worst case and the holy spirit cannot work with people who are distracted and so focused on worldly things and who are they they are the ones who take pleasure outwardly they glory in that outward appearance and paul is saying here you will have something to admonish them no answer means what something to correct them something to instruct them yes something to exhort them something to warn them something to alert them alarm them alert them are you doing it yeah in order to do that first of all you need to be a role model and example right else what would they say like how those son in laws who reacted to lot lot is saying come on the the uh, sodom and gomorrah is going to be burnt in hours from now and here are these angels they are asking us to get out yes they have heard my prayers and all that is adding more masala to it right more fragrance to it and then the son and lost looked at each other and they were laughing loudly and they were making fun of this guy lord how oh, my uncle lord what is this nonsense how come this new doctrine had come out of you so dramatically so miraculously so supernaturally so powerfully unbelievable isn't it my dear uncle come come enough of this all drama what come we were in the same pub yesterday night and we were having drinks together and what is this this new appearance your new countenance see don't be a hypocrite lot was the classical example of hypocrites hypocrisy however god considered him because every day he was living his life in repentance about which we spoke he was longing to reconcile but the poor fellow couldn't because he was pulled towards these worldly pleasures and that's why he goes to the open square and spends his time in loneliness repenting enough that he shouldn't have pulled off from his beloved uncle abraham and the moment he departs from abraham he also departs from the soulish related deeds or holy deeds and he's pulled towards the pleasures of the world and therefore he's now far away from god and there is no way that he could go back because why now he is also attracted towards his worldly pleasures because yeah he has gone too far into the trap i keep telling you this initial stages first 10 10 steps 20 steps 100 steps you're able to realize oh you are moving towards the wrong destiny is easy for you to travel back correct no but you have gone 500 miles or 10000 miles very difficult very the 500 miles is at least okay some of you can make effort and come back 10000 miles right 100000 miles 
What do you do? And you think devil will pave the way? No, he will bring earthquakes. He will bring um, uh, hailstones and storm storms and cyclones and hurricanes. He will not allow you to go back to your point zero. And by the time you reach point zero, you will be already in hell. About which we have spoken. That's why it's very important that you don't be part of this gang or people who take part in this outward glory. One more verse we will do, and with with that we shall close. For if we are beside ourselves. It is for God. Or if we are of sound mind, it is for you. He's talking about two different aspects here. If we are beside ourselves, beside means what? Besides anything and everything to do with you, your family, yeah, your job, your promotion, problems at workplace and sickness, illness, disease, and all about your Physical anatomy, all about your world related matters, but never ever misunderstand this teaching, please. This teaching doesn't mean that you need to step away from your earthly duties and responsibilities, being a father, being a husband, yeah, or God gave you an important work. Uh, you, you, you have a job, every one of us have to work, right? And then you resign your job and you say that, ah, oh, Bible says focus on the things that are of above and not on. Anything related to world, do not be conformed to the world and worldly pleasures. Therefore, I resigned my job and I dedicated my life towards ministry. Absolute rubbish. You need to wait for your chance. You need to wait for your turn. And there are very, very few people that resign their job for ministry. And because God told them firmly. Some people are saying that, but I don't believe. But some people, yes, truly God told them. And they, they definitely resigned. One classic example was Billy Graham. Another was DJ Stinakaran. Brother DJ Stenekaran, and he was a bank employee and he resigned his job and then he came. I'm not very sure about Billy Graham. Somebody told that he was working somewhere and then he resigned, full became a full time minister. But I know Brother DJ Stenekaran for sure, right? One of the one of the one of the prime uh, evangelists in, uh, in 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 India, I would say, at least in the southern part of India, right? Don't compromise on your earthly duties. That's not what it is. But then don't be focused or attached on the earthly deeds and earthly pleasures and earthly prosperity and all that materialistic deeds. If you stay away from all of these attachments, then you are for God. Absolutely, you are attached to God. What is this concept? This is self is reconciliation. See, what we are trying to preach and teach, or what Paul is trying to teach here is. There will be zero opportunities for reconciliation. Why? Because you will live your life already in perfection, beloved. You just follow these doctrines and teachings. It's not about you, uh, not, not about Paul is encouraging, oh, come on, you can sin. That's Nicolaitan's preaching. Yeah, he's not abusing the grace here. He's saying if you have understood the grace, the opportunity for repentance and reconciliation will be nullified, will be zero. <laughs> That's the kind of teaching we are talking here and that's why we are spending enough time. Yeah, my time is already up. But you see, we are spending enough time in analyzing these words of God. But if we are beside ourselves, it is for God whom you are living. But you are not compromising on your earthly duties or not slipping away or not getting sluggish, resigning a job and calling the name. Most of guys have become sluggish only after they have come to ministry. Yeah, that is another study. Statistics says. Because why? They learn to live their lives based on tithes and offerings and all that. No. This tithes and offerings is definitely not part of New Testament. It's Old Testament. Yeah. And if you're running the church, yes, one part of the tithe could definitely belongs to you, but you don't own any property. Yes. It must be a trust and charity or, um, uh, organization. It must be a trust that belongs to everyone. And you're only a caretaker and you're only playing the role of priesthood there. No, nothing else belongs. But nowadays what happens? It becomes family business. Yeah, anyway, I would like to limit my conversation there uh, and leave it to your imagination, right? Or if we are sound mind, it is for you. The sound mind is very, very important concept. A person who is of sound mind, right? You can never confuse him. Whatever puzzle, whatever riddle you put in front of him or you place it in front of him or whatever situations you bring or circumstances, that are challenging, nothing is difficult for that guy. He will be able to squeeze in and through and come out safely. Like how um, 
david had that uh, skill of getting into the battlefield and coming out safely and by the time he would come out safely he would kill at least 30 40 people yeah you will become the spiritual warrior you will definitely know the wiles of the devil beforehand or you know at least how to mitigate the risk or at least you know how to come out safely protecting you yourself and protecting your family too like how nova was very sensitive to god's calling and therefore after 120 years the rain came the whole world was amazed they lost a chance and that's a good uh, symbolical representation of what would happen next actually in the white throne judgment yeah they are banging the door and bible says god sealed the door because if noah were to lock the door there are chances he may open it because he is moved with humanity and compassion right 120 years he preached at least now people are realizing okay come in brother come in sister that's that's why noah was chosen he was so humble and kind and compassionate that's why god sealed god sealed uh, if god shuts the door no one can open it bible says then you will lose your chance too late to repent why because they were living their lives for themselves they were their lives were not for god but for the world and they were not of sound mind they think they are sound mind today many of the intellectuals top and entrepreneurs top doctors and top engineers and top this and top that they think all of your gold medalists and all that and they take so much of pride in their education knowledge which is good i'm not saying bad but you cannot be glorying only in that hmm? that's not sound mind that's feeble mind sound mind simply means the more you glory in god and thank him and appreciate him for his mercies now if you are falling by these doctrines we are closing with this if you are falling by these doctrines if you are abiding in these teachings tell me beloved where is the question of sin and then where is the question of repentance and then where is the question of reconciliation what are we talking here it's absolutely nullified absolutely nullified right why because you're already on the side of god and god is on your side and you're walking together as married couple and he's the bride he is the bridegroom and you are the bride ah huh? or, or aren't you already seeing paradise on earth aren't you already seeing heaven on earth yes heads bowed on and eyes closed heavenly father we want to thank you for this wonderful time and opportunity thank you for this doctrines and teachings lord which we don't get easily in the outside world because why the devil had deceived most of the churches and they are busy in talking something else the doctrines that are least needed whereas the doctrines like these that are most needed are very few people to sit down and preach and teach thank you for giving me that opportunity thank you for giving my beloved brothers and sisters that opportunity and helping us take us by your your side and lead us and transform us as the children of light in jesus name we pray god bless you my dear brothers and sisters uh, please subscribe to our channel and be part of our ministries carrying the word tran- you know transporting the word share it with your friends relatives family and all the people and be an instrument in the hands of god god bless you i'll soon meet you in the next session the series is not over here bye